Hello, just doing a quick video here to show you the settings that I'm running here on uh, the Haven protocol for mining. A viewer recommended I take a look at this project just because it seems to be pretty profitable here on Minerstat, for example. We'll be entering our hash rate in shortly, uh, but I just wanted to share with you the overclock settings that I'm using on my AMD RX 574 gigabyte video card. The miner that I'm using is the Team Ride Miner, and uh, the drivers are not that important but anyways I can just show you here anyways they're uh, 20.4 so it's a little bit older but yeah you can see I'm using the AMD RX 574 gigabyte uh, and we're getting about 980 hashes per second uh, the settings that I'm using is 1180 on the core 810 millivolts for voltage and 2000 for memory now quickly based off what i tested here i've been testing probably for about three hours now and what i found with this algorithm it is very memory dependent but it also requires a high core clock speed in order to get a solid hash rate obviously this will depend on your hardware uh, but i found core clock anywhere from 1150 to about 1200 uh, plus 2000 memory is kind of the sweet spot in terms of hash rate. Let me just show you the hash rate here quickly. We can also see our settings. Team Red Miner does a great job showing that here inside of the miner itself. You can see 2000 on the memory, 1180 on the core. And if you notice, um, I am showing the power consumption there. I hooked up a little uh, webcam so you can see my finger there. That is the live power consumption. And this is reading directly for the video card. The way I have the power set up is I've got my GPU hooked up to a secondary power supply, which is actually an HP 1200 watt, 94% efficient power supply. So I got uh, two PCIe cables coming out of that. I got one to the breakout board and one to the GPU. Uh, so yeah, that power that you're seeing right here, guys, this is just for the video card. Uh, so you can see we're fluctuating anywhere from about 95 watts down to about 93. And uh, we're getting, again, about 980 uh, hashes per second. So if I add that in here, so 980 hashes per second, the power consumption just for the video card is 95. Obviously, the system itself will be using, I'm using an older system, so it's probably using an additional 50, 60 watts. But just for the sake of this video, we're just going to calculate the card wattage. So 95 watts, pool fee. I'm just going to guess there's probably like a 1%, 2% pool fee. Always add that in when you're doing your profitability power cost. Here where I live, it is 16 cents. And uh, yeah, we'll just hit calculate. Um, w one thing I will mention with these, I guess you would call speculative altcoins, is that the profitability can fluctuate quite often. But anyways, I'll talk about that in just a second. You can see here in the last 24 hours, it's estimating about $2 revenue minus about $0.40 cents in electric. So out of all the... Uh, not protocols, but out of all the different algorithms and stuff, uh, this seems to be one of the most power efficient that I've seen out there. Ravencoin is much more power hungry. I would easily be pulling probably 120, 140 watts just for the video card. Uh, but uh, anyways, and yeah, on Ethereum, you're probably looking at around 115, 120, depending on your settings. Uh, but yeah, after power, it's estimating we'll make about a dollar seven, a dollar seventy there. So that's pretty reasonable, actually. Um, if profitability obviously stays uh, like the way it is, this would be well worthwhile considering just mining. So you can see right now the, the price actually has moved. That's one day, seven days, one month. This is what I recommend you guys also take a look at is the price activity of the coin that you are looking to mine. See, is this just a pump and dump coin? Because there are a lot of those projects. If you look at, for example, on Minerstat, if you go to the profitability for that RX 570, you'll see that it does flood. Like there are different little coins that pop up. They drop down in profitability. So before I would be switching over, uh, like I might swap this one video card, just do a 24 hour run on this Haven protocol. Uh, but before I commit more cards to it, I just want to make sure, okay, is the profitability consistent? Because if it fluctuates a lot, you might be better off just mining something like Ravencoin, which I personally am mining on my 12 RX 570 rig because I want that consistent payout and I know I know what to expect. I've got a set power bill, uh, so I always want to make sure that I got my costs covered there. Uh, but yeah, Haven Protocol seems like it just pumped a little bit. There's no other explanation, so it went from $16 up to about $26. Uh, but then you also want to make sure that you're watching the network hash rate. I'm personally going to be mining to Hero Miners. I've used this pool before. It's super easy to uh, have a look at what you're dealing with. It's got a profitability calculator in here. It's super easy, so you can do 0 point. We're doing 9.8. Uh, and it's estimating we'll make about $2 a day. You can select 24 hour. You can select the current difficulty, the 30 day average. So Hero Miners also has a built in profitability calculator. I'm personally going to be 
mining to this pool. Uh, I just find the layout super easy, and that's just the reason I picked the pool. But uh, anyways, in summary, um, with this algorithm here, uh, it seems that you don't need as high of a core voltage to run as like a really high core clock here. And this is uh, something that I found out just from randomly testing. And this is why I mentioned in this video, you always, always, always want to test a whole bunch of variety of settings. Could it take you an extra three hours of testing? Yes. But if you are looking to mine this coin long term, like a week, a month, maybe two months down the line, uh, depending, of course, on profitability, um, it is worthwhile, in my opinion, to really go through all the different variables and settings to find okay do we need a lower can we run a lower voltage with this core how demanding is it on the core uh, in summary i would say this protocol here the kryptonite uh, xhv uh, seems to need a high core clock speed but it's not that demanding hence why we're able to run that low core voltage because if i flip this over to ethereum right now i guarantee it would crash immediately uh, I would only be able to run maybe 1100 megahertz on the core for that 810 millivolts. But uh, yeah, these are the settings I'm running. Your mileage will vary. Everyone's GPU's a little bit different, uh, but play around. You can try locking in 1100 megahertz on the core, 2000 memory. Uh, also, one thing I'll quickly point out for memory. If your memory crashes with the mem state set to one, let me show you here. Um, so you have your memory state if it crashes while it's set to memory state one You're going to want to switch this to two and let me explain here quickly So if we hop over over to the shell in a box and we go to AMD dash info This will show you your overclock settings uh, while you're in Linux so you don't actually need to hop over to uh, the tab there, but here it shows us what we're running. So you can see our core clock speed right now is 1180 megahertz. We're running 2000 on the core um, seems to be pretty memory demanding we've got all our vram pretty much filled up there you can see our core voltage is 812 millivolts and vddci i believe is the memory controller voltage so this is what will change uh, the memory controller voltage is what will change when you change this here the memory state so mem state one you'll be on the lower memory controller voltage and if you set it to mem state 2 for my card here, instead of 850 millivolts, it'll bump up to 900 millivolts and I'll be able to run a little bit higher um, uh, memory clock speed. Uh, but of course, I always go for that power efficiency, so I'm just going to see whatever's stable on the mem state 1. But that's also a setting to understand there. And then core state 1 just means that we're going to be running on the first core state there, so there's not going to be any undervolts applied. So... Yeah, I can go more in depth with this. I've I've been mining for a while. I understand the software pretty well, but I just wanted to quickly give an overview uh, for mining Kryptonite XHV here, and uh, yeah, just the hash rate and performance that you can get, as well with the accurate power draw from the wall directly from a power supply hooked up to the GPU. We don't have any motherboard CPU RAM load or anything like that. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. Sorry if it was a long one. If you guys have any questions, you can put them in the comment section below. But please do understand. Uh, mining is pretty hot right now. I will not be able to answer majority of the questions that are in the chat. As you see, my YouTube channel is pretty small right now. Maybe you'll get lucky and you'll get an answer. Um, if you do decide to comment, I'd be curious to know what hardware are you running and what settings did you decide to go with if you are mining Kryptonite uh, XHV here. I'd be curious to know. That would mean a lot to me if you uh, made it this far. Just to leave a comment and let me know what you are running there. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you got some value from this video. I'm, I'm going to be looking at putting out some more videos maybe we can do some settings for like ethereum classic i mean that's an easy one you got 1100 megahertz core 800 core voltage 2000 memory but if there are any other algorithms out there i might take a look at and then i'll be posting a video and uh yeah good luck with mining and uh, look forward to seeing you in my next video take care